There have been some devastating phone recalls, as well as some less known examples. Some have affected every unit sold, resulting in a total recall, while others have only affected a smaller percentage. And while most flagship models are well received, some have gained a reputation for being less reliable than others, exhibiting common faults. Faults not being an inability to repair or use a damage, but phones that have just had a reputation from the perspective of a phone repairer as having a typical point of failure, a possible design flaw. But when you sell hundreds of millions of each model every year, you're going to get a few duds. Even if just 1% of 100 million phones exhibit an issue, that's still a million phones. That's why issues from smaller manufacturers are less known. Google has sold a total of 40 million phones since the release of their first phone. The Google Pixel's most notable issue was with their first model, which developed a microphone fault. Google acknowledged the fault and said they would replace faulty phones, saying it affected less than 1% of devices and was caused by a bad solder joint on the audio IC. Samsung has seen the worst of a tech recall, with two recalls on its infamous Galaxy Note 7. A recall I think everyone remembers. Nothing is more devastating than a phone that is going up in flames not once, but twice with battery fires affecting both the original and recall replacement devices, resulting in a total cancellation of the entire phone model. I think out of every phone ever released, the Galaxy Note 7 takes the crown for the most devastating recall. But it wasn't the only issue Samsung phones have faced. Some Galaxy S7 phones stopped powering on or charging at all. Samsung has also had some trouble with early models of their Galaxy foldables, with the folding display breaking very easily. To this day, foldable screens are still not as durable as their flat counterparts, and while they have improved, there is still plenty of examples online of phones with fractures where the display folds. As such, I'd personally class foldables as the least reliable class of devices. Apple's had quite a number of what they call service programs, or as you and I might call them, recalls. While it may be seen as a bad thing to have so many devices eligible for free repairs to known faults, it does show Apple's commitment to ensure their users are looked after, at least for most of these issues. To be fair, a lot of these issues pose no safety risks. Although there have been some battery recalls, including a model of devices that contained a battery that may overheat and pose a fire risk. It was the 2015 MacBook Pro. So if you have a 2015 model MacBook, check your serial number on Apple's website. But thankfully, the iPhone has never had a major recall like that of Samsung's Galaxy Note 7. But that's not to say every iPhone model has been perfect. There have been official service programs for the iPhone 12, 11, 10, 8, 7, 6s, 6, 5, and 4. That's almost every major generation. Some issues were thankfully smaller than others, or only affected a small percentage of devices. The first widespread issues were seen with the iPhone 3G and 3GS, specifically around batteries. Quite a number expanded like balloons, and because of the way the phones were designed at the time, an expanded battery could damage the back housing, logic board, and display, essentially destroying the whole phone. The redesigned iPhone 4 that followed didn't suffer from the same issue, but a number of other issues. Many remember this model as one of the best designed iPhones and have fond memories. But looking back, there were many devices that experienced issues with poor signal reception as a result of the antenna placement on the frame, so much so, Apple offered a free bumper case for affected customers. Other issues experienced were home button issues. The fix for most was just bending the charging cable down to realign the home button cable. Or microphone issues, where no one could hear you in a phone call. A board level issue that didn't have a simple fix. The 4S was certainly an improvement on the iPhone 4, fixing the antenna issues, but it introduced another, Wi-Fi problems. Some devices developed an issue where you could no longer enable Wi-Fi. The proper fix was to reflow the Wi-Fi chip. However, some found heating the chip with a hairdryer was enough to return Wi-Fi functionality, even if only temporarily. My personal favorite model of iPhone, the 5, had two official repair programs, including one for bad batteries and another for power buttons that stopped working. The 5S perfected an already good phone 
and was one of the first of Apple's phones in many years not to get a service program, or an issue repairers would class as being too common. Although some did suffer from a red screen of death caused by bad NAND storage, although I don't know how common this issue was. The 6 proved to be Apple's best-selling iPhone so far, at over 220 million units sold. But it became known for its problems. Most notably, it could bend. This structural issue is the likely cause of the no service and no touch issues that would surface sometime after its release. It's believed that the flexing of the housing that came with general wear and tear was to blame. The no service issue, which resulted in no detection of a SIM card or network, never received an official service program. But the touch disease problem did, although it remains one of the only programs where Apple acknowledged the issue but continued to charge a repair fee, although discounted, for affected devices, as they didn't believe it was truly a design flaw, rather user fault. But many disagree. The success would bring another battery recall for devices with weak batteries that would cause random shutdowns, along with a no power issue that would also see a replacement program. It appears this issue was specific to the later 32GB model that launched as a cheaper alternative after the release of the iPhone 7. It too had its own issues, including another no service issue that this time received a service program for devices in selected countries. However, the 7 also suffered from a board level audio issue like the iPhone 4. However, this time it caused the whole phone to no longer boot up, keeping it stuck in a boot loop. This issue became known as loop or audio disease. I covered this issue several years ago, and despite it not receiving a dedicated service program, I was able to get an out of warranty device replaced at the time. Whether because of consumer protections in Australia, or Apple was somewhat acknowledging the issue, I don't know for sure. I have witnessed all these issues mentioned so far, having dealt with repairing many phones over the years. However, I can't say as though I've ever come across this next issue, which affected iPhone 8 models. This may be because it affected far less units. Apple acknowledged some iPhone 8 models contained a logic board fault that would cause some phones not to turn on, randomly restart, or freeze. The iPhone 10, which came out the same year, also got its own repair program for touch issues. Thankfully, being one of the more minor, easily fixed issues on this list. But its redesigned internals meant the logic board now comprised of two sections sandwiched together. For devices that had a more hard life, this could result in minor separation of these layers, which proved to cause the no service and no touch issues. I experienced this myself with two iPhone Xs I purchased cheaply some time ago. The touch issues also saw their way into the iPhone 11 with yet another service program, along with one for the 12 series of phones for having no sound. Of course, some of these issues only affected a small number of phones. However, it appears some of the issues that affected earlier models of iPhone were more widespread. The good news is, since the iPhone 13, there hasn't been any major widespread faults. This could be a result of newer iPhone models remaining very similar to previous ones, allowing for refinement and improved reliability. As for the most reliable Apple device, the data shows that the S and SE models have always tended to be more reliable, mainly because Apple had ironed out the issues by then. And as for the least reliable iPhone models, eh, in my personal opinion, I'd probably say the iPhone 4, 6 and 7. The 4 was a very loved phone, but looking back it did have a lot of common issues, the 6 and 7 too. But overall, for the number of phones sold every year, most of the top manufacturers do quite a good job. And I think it takes guts to offer replacements or free repairs when things don't go quite to plan. Have you ever had an unreliable device or used one of these repair or exchange programs? With my application iTest, you can check hardware functionality of an Android or iOS device to see if your phone is suffering from any hardware issues. It also has the ability to verify device specifications for Android to help you stay safe from spoofed hardware info have the ability to share your results with a prospective buyer, or be reassured that your repaired phone is working as it should. Available now for just one US dollar. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, consider subscribing and check out the playlist for tech that's not what it seems. And if you're looking for any used devices, be sure to check out my online store, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.